get this right, digital nests, amongst, amongst other things. Francis Irving. Mm, does this come out? So I want you to think about when you first used Facebook. So how many people here four years ago used Facebook and liked using it? Like put your hand up if you used Facebook four or five years ago and, and kind of liked it. And now put your hand up if you use it still now and you still quite like it. Okay, it's interesting. So there's a, there's a, there's a mix. Some, the, the, there's a rather kind of inflammatory Daily Mail article here that says, is the tide turning for Twitter and Facebook? One in four young people is bored with social media. Of course, it's a completely misleading article because you read down to the third paragraph and it says, actually 37% of respondents claim to be using social networks more than previously as well. So th there is some evidence that some people are getting bored of, of Facebook. Um, I'm not actually going to answer this question as to whether Facebook's declining. There's lots of interesting questions. Is there a seven-year itch for social networks when you just get bored of all the friends that you haven't curated that are on there from seven years ago and then you leave and do something else like Pinterest? Um, but I don't know the answer to that. So instead, I'm going to tell you some background, if I, can, if I can get the key to work on my Mac. So this is a diagram of... Um, the most famous money-making list engine, uh, I'm going to call it, in the world, which is the internal algorithm of how Google works. And it's actually about people. It doesn't look like it's about people, but it, was, it started out by using what was called link voting. So they looked at links on the internet, and pages that got, roughly speaking, pages that got linked to from lots of other places got a good score. Um, it's slightly more complicated than that, but basically, yeah. This is... Um, essentially a method of building a list and, and a li lists of things that point to places so it's a, a list of when you do a search like this is a search for social media cafe you get a list of places to go to and you'll, you'll note actually that when you search for social media cafe the Liverpool one isn't near the top so we need to need to do something about that um, everyone tries to manipulate these lists search engine optimization is trying to get yourself higher up on, on this list and when you're reading it, you use it as a list. You follow through and go to maybe the first few that are, that are interesting. It makes Google lots of money. Facebook likes, which are relatively recent in Facebook's history, are also really ultimately to do with lists. They're making lists of things that you like that can and, and that then get fed to you as, as are places to go to or, play, or things you remember that your, your friends can see that you like. The other half of this, this is a theory that I'm telling you about, which is from a completely mad blogger who's incomprehensible, so I'm trying to make it as comprehensible as possible. He's just very interesting because he thinks about the internet overall rather than getting stuck in the nitty-gritty of the current situation. I think it's quite important, especially when you're kind of, in some ways, uh, behind when you're not running Google or Facebook, to think about what you're being made to do by them and to try and find other ways around it. So as well as lists, the other thing that's very important on the internet is nests. And a nest is a place where you like to be, which you make your own, like a bird makes their nest nice. And Facebook, to me, when I first used it, was very much a nest, because I would make the list of my closer friends, and I would make um, you know, lists of photographs that I, I liked and that I put up there. So it felt like a, a home to me. And more recently, if, does it, who here has heard of Pinterest? I'll just mention it again because it's, it's relatively new. But it's very much, it's about making lists of photographs that you like, such as like a, a, a boots that you're about to buy or something like that. So nests are places that you like as a home. The most famous nest, I would say at the moment, is actually the iPhone home screen, which is basically a, a nest of all your favorite things that you, uh, your favorite applications, favorite things you can do. And it's nice because you kind of control it and it's very... It, it feels good to, to, to have a nice list of things that you like. Um, well, I said list again there. The, this diagram is the four different business models that come from this. The bottom left is the list engine model, where you make point, basically you find ways for people to go to other places that are interesting. Um, and you can extract quite a lot of money doing that. At the bottom right is the nests, where you make places where people can gather things. It's not very easy to make money out of that digitally, although you can make money from it, by, as Apple do, by selling hardware uh, related to it. The things at the top depend upon them. So the hit factories, is he, I don't like the names he's given these, but uh, we'll keep with it. Hit factories is when you make something like a, a, a big movie or some music or some artwork. And basically, hit factories are what Google is, is nicking some money on, from in order to, to, to generate traffic to. And on this side, we've got nests, where you're kind of curating things that you like. And you've got bling factories, which are things for you to put in your nest, like little trinkets for the, uh, 
the little, 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 little things that the bird has stolen to put in their nest, and the, the apps in an app store or, mu or music that you're curating into your Spotify playlists, they, those would be, be bling factories. It's, yeah, it's kind of, kind of interesting. There's, there's lots about the money that you can get from doing this. Um, if you're just digital, right now, the way the internet works, which is basically not charging for content, because there's no culture or easy means of doing that, essentially con con content makes what's, what, what he calls digital dimes, very small amounts of money. And at the other end, nest building, uh, which is Facebook, Twitter, has lots of activity but doesn't make much money. And the thing in the middle that makes the most money the most easily is, is roughly what Google does and actually what eBay does, he claims, rather kind of, I don't quite know how it works, uh, is, is it makes, makes more money. And what Facebook essentially is doing in many ways is moving from the bottom of this pyramid up the pyramid as time passes. So they've gone from um, being a place that felt quite nice and homely where your closest friends were and they've expanded it out, made it so you have more friends, made it so you post in public, made it so you uh, say which products you like. And they're gradually getting into this, this ad very strong advertising business, which the list building does. And they could eventually destroy Google in, in that place. But as a user, I don't really care, because I like nests more, really, than lists. I'm quite happy with Google's lists. So it's, um, th this, is, this is all machinations that are happening. This is the kind of, a very basic version of the kind of thing they'll be arguing about in Facebook all the time and plotting graphs of, doing experiments on us all to find out how it works. And we're sitting here in a small, uh, declining because of the event of the shipping container city in the corner of Europe, trying to, you know, trying to make, make our lives much better and more interesting uh, and more, um, and more rich again. And playing this game isn't necessarily the way to do it. It's much better to try and create new things. And one of the interesting new traits with social media on the internet is that lots of new communities are being formed. I'm going to give one example, which is a kind of uh, a distant one. Has anyone here used Quora? If you just put your hand up, if you use Quora. It's a qu relatively recent question and answer site started by an ex-chief technology officer of Facebook who quit. And one of the interesting things is uh, it built a new community. So they, he deliberately set out to create a new community. And he used his community, which was people in, in Silicon Valley who run startups. But there are other communities you could start in different places that you already know that, that might grow from. And he, he did it by nicking the social graph from Facebook. So by using Facebook Connect, they could very quickly take people from one community into a new community. And the actual software of Quora isn't very interesting. It really is just a, something that could have been made 10 years ago. The, the interesting thing about many new things on the internet is the community around them. So all, often now think about communities rather than necessarily about technology. Um, a really radical example of that is a site called Forced, which is a community for web designers and de de developers and designers. And Forced is invite only. It's all quite profit making. It has a really high conversion rate, tens of thousands of paying users. And the way it's done that is by being utterly exclusive about joining it. So when you join it, during the sign-up process, it makes you look at a piece of, um, of design and rate it uh, before you can sign up. And the other user, existing users of the site then judge whether your rating was interesting or good or not. And if it wasn't, you're not allowed to join. So it's, a <laughs> so it's basically a club. But they've done that because they've made it exclusive. They've managed to get lots of members, and they're paying members, and they value that community. So although, and the actual software is really boring, it's basically no more interesting than like Tumblr or something. It's just a place where you post things and people comment on them. But the, the, the interesting thing they've added is, is how they've made it, made it work socially. Um, a very geeky example that's more, more akin to what I do in my day job is a, a site called Kaggle, which is about machine learning. And they've got a community of geeks that write machine learning algorithms. And they attract them with these crazy challenges competitions where they go, write a piece of code that will, in this case, it's, uh, predict what will happen for insurance claims. And they make money by reselling the algorithm once their community have, has made it. And they're quite, um, they also do more interesting things like classifying galaxies or, or uh, working out what happens to glaciers, that kind of thing. And... What I like about it is that they're mixing both a business with building a community by doing something clever that attracts the community. And again, the actual software is pretty simple in, in programming terms. They're not doing great genius. So what I want you to think about is in Liverpool, Liverpool's a very unusual place. It's got a rich culture. It's got lots of diverse things, everything from the slave trade to the Beatles to football, which have been, have been like, very important here. And there must be something interesting about it, communities in it, which we could build something from, or someone could build something from, that we've just not thought of yet. So I want you to think, if, yeah, if you were making a social network here, 
you know, it, we're not Mark Zuckerberg at Harvard University, so we can't start by making a thing for all, everyone in Harvard University. But is there something else that's unique to here that maybe we can do?